see what the universe has in store for us this time. Medea's Revenge. Everything but Cosmic will be active. And all three active. Need to be royal. Okay. Then we're going to have a smite, a drought, some cancer, an oxygen spike, and we're getting warm. Smite isn't going to do anything because the only two refugium out are shielded from smite. We do not have a terrestrial organism. Drought will do nothing, but our lamp shells do need to make a cancer roll. Three bions and three cubes worth of cancer roll. We do have a cancer shield, so we only worried about sixes. Oof! Ouch! And we ended up with three sixes and no ones. My luck has run out. One will be protected by the blue organ, but I'm going to lose two. I don't want to lose that UV shield. So I'll lose the yellow and then I'll also lose the blue. Darn it. We have a level one O2 spike. The lamp shells are safe from that with the entropy chromosomes and antioxidant. The viroid is not safe. And is taken out again. I will live to fight another day. And our PNA template does not have any entropy chromosomes, does not have any antioxidants, so it will also suffer atrophy. Which one do I want to get rid of? I think I'll drop cytochromes so I can keep my DNA air shield and my nucleus that will allow me to make purchases that will return cytochromes to the landform and we're in a warming period. The blue player is our first player and we need to see which side they are going to use. We staying on viroid or flipping? Nope, we're staying. Unfortunately for us, the only thing that has a red or a green to steal are the lamp shells. The red player is on the hydrothermal vent, has a biont in these organisms, and is going to stay where they're at. The green player is already on the hydrothermal vent and cannot place another one out. So that takes care of our assignments really quick. Now we'll do our autocatalytic roll for the hydrothermal vent. And once again, we did not get any ones. But we did get doubles. I'm going to go ahead and flip it. I'm not going to wait. We rolled doubles. So we're going to go ahead and flip hydrothermal vent into an organism for the green player. And giving us a marine bacteria, acetyl-CoA reduction. We're almost completely out of refugiums that are in play right now. And that'll bring us to our Darwin roll, starting with the blue player and the viroid. The Viroid will make its Darwin roll and only get one error, which it's protected from. Bring us the red player's PNA template 
not a whole lot left on that organism. And it makes a pretty rough roll. But we still did have our DNA shield. And we can re-roll one. And we ended up with triples. So out of all that, we still ended up getting a blue catalyst. And the one error is taken care of by our heredity chromosome. And finally, the new guy, acetyl-CoA reduction. Pretty darn good. Not a single error in the bunch. And we got two ones and two metabolism chromosomes, which will give us four green catalysts. First up in our purchase phase will be the blue player. And there is a blue catalyst there. And the only active land form that has a blue available is the ocean. So it will spend my single remaining catalyst and purchase mRNA for itself. Red, unfortunately, is not able to make any purchases because it has no catalysts left in its tableau, taking us to the green player, who has plenty of catalysts, and luckily has a biont in the lamp shells and can purchase an organ for us. And I'll purchase a green so I can have the UV shield back in place. Red will make a purchase for itself. I'm sorry, green will make a purchase for its organism now. And it's going to spend two green catalysts to equal one yellow. So I can take the reverse citric acid cycle to gain a heat shield, but most importantly, to gain fission. That will end all of our purchases. And things are not looking good for lamp shells being able to become a terrestrial organism. The PNA template is still far away from becoming a macroorganism, but we do have hopes maybe with acetyl-CoA if we can get a a couple of mutations on it, we might be able, before we end this round, I'm going to correct an error that I just realized. I have a red biont in acetyl-CoA reduction, which means I could have made a purchase with the red using Green's Tableau. I'm going to do that now. I cannot go after the chaperone proteins because the reverse citric acid cycle was on top of that and got purchased at a time which would have been after the turn that our red player went. But I will spend one green and get chemiosmosis, respiration. Gives us a red queen, but it will also give us another green entropy it gives me another green entropy chromosome, plus now I have one color of each cube, which will move me a lot closer to being able to purchase a macroorganism. Because with flatworms, I only need an additional red. That's the only one I can purchase for one, but I do have the ability to make two purchases with the green player, so I might be able to get something that I would only need two more. Or I could just make two purchases, buy something red, and then immediately turn it into a macroorganism for my second purchase. Purchases are all complete. 
it doesn't look like there was any harm done in doing it out of order like that. We have a really wounded lamp shells here. It's still going to take five organs and we need to somehow get a hold of some catalysts, but we're in three different organisms right now. I don't think that's going to happen. Same with our green player still has a biont, so we might be able to get some catalysts for it and make foreign purchases along with purchases for itself. Or maybe it might be time to use HGT there and pull that red biont out. But then again, we have no landforms available except for the biosphere that's going to take a catalyst just to put our biont on there, and I don't have any catalysts. So Hopefully our next event won't be so brutal to us and maybe bring out an additional landform. Welcome. Thank you for joining me. Before we start the next round of the game, I'd like to address a mistake I made. A pretty big mistake. Actually two. Two mistakes that I made. The first one was not playing the blue player during the assignment phase in one of the rounds. Second, this one went against me, and that was not recognizing the system chromosomes on the side of my macroorganisms card. This means by not recognizing those, I went several rounds without taking the beneficial effects for myself. Now I could go back through all the video, look and see what I did along the way, backtrack the game to that point, and then start over from there, but I don't see much point in doing that right now. I will just leave it the way it is and accept the damage that was done on the poor brutalized lamp shells. I'm just going to chalk this up to a learning experience. Hopefully you can learn from it too and remember the mistakes that I made so you won't make them in your game and just realize sometimes you just fuck up. Thank you for giving me a moment to explain myself. Now back to the game. The end is approaching. Just a few cards left in this stack. Gaia Ozone Layer. All landforms are active. Even our cosmic landform is active. Maybe we'll get lucky and generate some catalysts so we can get some organs purchased. Our ozone layer is formed. We can ignore UV events until the end of the game. Would have been nice earlier in this era. We have a single O2 spike and yellow will be our first player. We're still in a warming period. The single O2 spike will only affect the PNA template. Everyone else, all of our other organisms are well protected against it. So the PNA template will have to suffer an atrophy of its promoted organism or promoted mutation, which will flip it over to the O2 spike side again. I don't know if when it's demoted back to a side that had an O2 spike, if that O2 spike is applied again. That O2 spike would occur in the continent landform and also there's no entropy chromosomes so is that a level 0 O2 spike? Questions I'd like to find the answer to. Let me know if you know where that's at in the rules. It won't matter here since there are no other active continent landforms right now so we're okay there. Yellow would have been our first player, 
but this case will be blue now since yellow is extinct which will take us into the assignment phase blue is already assigned over here to red it has a biont in every organism I could use HGT to extinct the PNA template to take my biont back I don't see a lot of point in that because I couldn't go to the Depot Biosphere anyway or Biosphere it's not a sphere, it's not something you throw the Depot Biosphere because I don't have a catalyst to be able to go there so red will stay green though does have a biont but do I want to spend a catalyst to go there to maybe earn no catalysts we're in a warming period it's a one or a two whether it's warming or cooling there there's only a couple of cards left we're not going to probably flip that into an organism I don't know if it's worth it I should probably keep my catalyst so I can make a purchase for the lamp shells and then a purchase for well no I can't make a purchase for the lamp shells because they have no enzymes no enzymes no catalysts available I'll go ahead and do it I'll spend the enzyme the catalyst spend the catalyst and go to the depot biosphere and that will be our only autocatalytic role All right, we're here in the depot biosphere could use some enzymes uh, probably not going to generate much here a three and a five does not organize any mana it'll actually kick my biont off and give me a green catalyst in compensation that'll take us into our Darwin rolls first up would be the blue player the viroid two cubes and a biont. It's got two air shields, so unless this is terrible it'll probably survive this just fine. And I did have to say that out loud. It is terrible. It can't reroll any. And it has three errors. So it will lose its mutation cube and mRNA will go back to the ocean. Next we have the red player who has the PNA template with one cube and one biont. It has one error shield because of the heredity chromosome and it will generate one blue catalyst which is good. We're going to need to purchase some organs and also it is protected from this error and we have our green players Darwin roll two biomes, four cubes here we go okay one two fives three fours, a one, a couple of twos, okay that's gonna help. This one will generate two green catalysts and those fours will generate an additional green catalyst and that'll be the max number of green that we can have. We do have two errors to contend with but we can re-roll one of those. So we can re-roll one. Anything but a five or a six, please. Even better. Well, we can't generate any more catalysts because we're maxed out on green, but we're protected from our one error. Darwin rolls are complete. They'll take us into the purchase phase, starting with the blue player, but our red player has the HGT ability on tmRNA and with that he can claim wantonness at the beginning of any phase not just during the, the player assignment phase at the beginning at the beginning of any phase so he's gonna claim it no one else has HGT so he will go first and then the blue player will go because you go back to the player order 
Then we'll skip over the red and come over here to the green because red have already gone. But I'm going to claim it. That way I can purchase a blue organ for my lamp shells before the viroid would have used it to buy a mutation for itself. And then we would go to the blue player who has no catalysts to spend, taking us to the green player. The green player is going to make a purchase for the lamp shells. Do I want to buy the green cube? No. I'll go for a different color because I'm going to if I get any cat the right catalysts, then I'll I'll red queen back that green cube. So I'll leave that spot open and I'll purchase one of those needed yellow by spending two green. Use chemo selectivity. And get the heart and blood back, which will give me an additional oxygen shield also. Come to my next organism with a biont, and I will spend one green to promote chemoosmosis respiration to its promoted side. Hyphae. Lots of abilities. Spore, Oxygen Shield, Red Queen, HGT. Now Blue Player does not have the single HGT out there. But I do have Fission on this organism, which means I can make a second purchase. I'll spend two more to equal the yellow so I can promote the reverse citric acid cycle. And that will give us oxygen respiration, another red queen spore, and a couple of oxygen shields. We're well protected against oxygen spikes now. And neither one of those are polluters, so they're not going to cause an oxygen spike themselves. That will conclude this round. We need to get some more landforms out maybe so we can generate some catalysts without having to pay a catalyst to go to the deep hot biosphere. This pile is getting low. Looks like there's only two cards left. We're almost to the end. Still need three more organs for the lamp shells. We're cutting it close, but we might be able to do it. Okay, here we go. The next to the last. T Tari Super Flare. Everything is active except the Continental or the Continent. Continental is a breakfast, but the Continent is inactive. Oh, actually, it does say Continental on the card, so that's why I said that. Okay, I don't feel like I made a mistake now. We're going to have a smite, a double extremophile, cancer. Normally we would have UV, but UV is ignored till the end of the game due to our ozone layer. And our first player would be yellow, but it's going to be red since yellow is no longer around. First, we deal with smite quickly. Depot biosphere is protected. That's done. Extremophile event. Acetyl CoA has two heat shields there. It's safe from the double. Lamp shells has one biont, I'm sorry, a trophic level biont, and one system chromosome to give it two heat shields. It's safe. Next, we have the PNA template that has its biont and it has a heat shield on tmRNA. It's safe, but the viroid has no heat shields at all, and we'll take two atrophies and get placed back 
on the sidelines for now. Which means I won't be red queening that cube off of them. Now we'll go to Cancer and we'll have to make a roll for the lamp shells. We have three biots and three organs. We need a good roll here. We need some ones because we need catalysts to make purchases. Need a couple of ones and no sixes. Okay, that worked out great. We ended up with three ones. These fives don't matter because of our cancer shield. We only have the one error and we're good because we have two blue heredity chromosomes. We have one system chromosome and then we have the blue organ that's going to protect us so we're good there. And we get three catalysts in the colors that we want. And we're going to go for red, yellow, and green because those are the colors of the organs we need. Time for the assignment phase starting with our red player. Our red player is in three organisms. I'm not going to want to pull that one off to spend a catalyst to move it to the depot biosphere, so we're fine there. Green does have one biont and one catalyst. Is it worth moving it to the depot biosphere for the hopes of maybe getting up to two? Oh, could it get two catalysts? No, it could really only get one, I think. Going to the depot biosphere does not make a lot of sense to me because I would spend a catalyst and then if I rolled a one or a two I would organize mana but then I'd also have to roll a five or a six with the other die to disorganize it and gain one back or if I got kicked off I would just gain back a green no need to go there because I might end up spending a catalyst for nothing we'll have to see which side the viroid is going to stay on I mean the blue player is going to stay on will it stay on the viroid side it will. So it's going to go after red and green. It can go after red and green. There's one green organ. Or there's green chromosomes over here on the mutations. But nothing has red and green for it to steal. So it's going to have to choose between the lamp shells or acetyl-CoA. One, two, and three lamp shells. It's going to go to the lamp shells. Damn it. The viroid has assigned itself to the lamp shells and parasitized the green uh, cube, the green organ, which was the pancreas. If parasitized is a word, not sure. Next we will go into our Darwin rolls, starting with the red player and the PNA template. Normally we would have had the autocatalytic roll there, but we have no bionds on any refugium. PNA template makes its Darwin roll. We'll gain one blue catalyst. And is going to get two errors. Protected from one, but then the second one will wipe out tmRNA, leaving the PNA template with its lonely red biont. Next we have green with its big acetyl-CoA reduction, a couple of biont's and six mutation cubes. Lots of dice to roll, lots of chance for things to happen. Okay, two ones couple of twos, we got triple threes, a four, and two fives. So the ones are going to generate two green catalysts apiece. That'll give me four, plus the triples will give me five, which is the max that I can have for a particular color. So we'll be maxed out on green catalysts. Okay. We have two errors. 
Actually, we have no errors. That's right, I've promoted mutations. I have no errors. I could re-roll one of these. Oh, I could re-roll two. I could re-roll one safely, because then I have one heredity chromosome to protect me if I roll a six. Or I could re-roll both. Is there a point? No, because I can only gain green catalysts and I'm maxed out, so there's no need to re-roll anything. We're done with the Darwin rolls. Almost forgot the Darwin roll for the Viroid, our blue player. Ended up with nothing at all. Go into purchases now. The red player is going to spend one green, two red queen, my pancreas back. I also have a biont in acetyl CoA reduction. I already started the purchase phase with the red player, but then I had the strange feeling that I didn't royal the decks again, so I went back and checked the video, and I did not. So before we move any further, let me royal the active decks. Okay, now we're straight. I was going to purchase that organ, or Red Queen that organ back anyway, so that's not a problem. Now I do have a Red Biont in Acetyl-CoA, and I, to go to Flatworms, I think I need an additional Red. Flatworms require Red, Red, Yellow, Green, Blue. I have the Yellow Green, blue, yeah, I would need an additional red, but is there anything else bigger I might be able to get? I could get something bigger, but I'd rather have some extra cubes left over. That would make much more sense. So I'm going to spend two green to equal one red. Purchase the Super Oxide Dismutase. Move everybody over. And that will give me the additional red that I need for the flatworms. Next we have our green player who's going to purchase an organ for the lamp shells. Which one do I want to purchase? I have a red, a yellow, and a green. I spent my green to get my cube back. So I'll purchase the red. That'll give me a brain and an additional heat shield. Now green's going to make a purchase for its own organism. Spend one of its own green catalysts, and we're going to get the flatworms. We need two red, one yellow, a green, and a blue. That'll leave us. All of these will go back to the ocean. And that will leave us with a couple of biots. This is going to be Green's organism. So it will go on the trophic level, which we'll have to adjust since we have two macroorganisms in the ocean. The endosymbiont will go there as a UV shield. And then We'll give it we'll give it an anus and blood pigment. And the blood pigment will give us an oxygen shield. So it can now be protected from oxygen and poo. That will bring us around to blue. 
It can make purchases for itself. We got a yellow and a blue. There are two, three, there are three blue mutations available. So we're going to have to randomly determine which one it's going to purchase. One, two, three, four, five, six. One. It's going to purchase tRNA. Viroid spends my catalyst. Picks up tRNA or mRNA. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. No wonder I thought I was saying it wrong. T. RNA. There we go. That's the one that it purchased. That'll give it one HGT ability. At the end of the purchase phase where the flatworms, a new macroorganism, was added, we have to find out the metabolic rate to see who belongs in which trophic level. Metabolic rate is determined by the total red and yellow chromosomes, including the system chromosomes over here. Once a macroorganism is added at the end of the purchase phase when one is added or it changes its yellow and red chromosomes around, we have to figure out what the metabolic rate is to see which trophic level each organism resides in. And that includes red and yellow chromosomes and including the system chromosome. So our flatworm has three red, two yellow, so that's a metabolic rate of five. The lamp shells has two red and four yellow, so that's going to give it a six, which means six will move up, or lamp shells with six will move up to the next trophic level. So it went from plant to herbivore and flatworms will stay residing in the plant trophic level. That's the end of our purchase phase. Looks like we're on our last card here, so this is going to be it. We're two organs away from going terrestrial. I don't know if we'll be able to do it. We have a yellow there ready to go, but nobody's going to be able to claim wantonness over the tRNA here. So depending on what the player order is, is tRNA going to waste that yellow one? Or are we going to get to go before it and maybe fill both those spots up? I hope so. I'd like to flip that to a terrestrial organism right at the end of the game if possible. But if not, we gave it a good run. Let's see what happens in our last 200 million years. Here we go. This is it. This is our last 200 million year segment. Our last chance to gain a terrestrial organism. The Pangea Breakup. So we're going to have the ocean and continent landforms active. And hopefully we'll get some useful landforms come out. We're going to get one from below, one from above. UV doesn't matter because of our ozone layer, and we're cooling back down. One from below will bring out the hydrogen. Ah, can't pick it up. Hydrogen volcano. Well, that place is a mess. Two, three, four, five, six. And we're in a cooling period, so that doesn't help us a whole lot. Ones and twos. 
And then we take one from above, but the only active land forms are ocean and continent, and there's nothing left. Unfortunately, the first player is going to be blue. It's already assigned where it's going to stay. We come around to red. All its biomes are in organisms. We come to green. It has one biont outside an organism. I'll go to the hydrogen volcano. Maybe I'll be able to generate a few or maybe at least one catalyst. Okay, could use a couple of catalysts here. Hydrogen volcano is pretty volatile. Well, the one will organize a mana. I'll choose to organize the blue with the one and then the five will bring it right back down, giving me a blue catalyst. That's the only autocatalytic role we needed. We'll start with the blue player in our Darwin rolls. It's Viroid with one mutation. And it survives just fine. Didn't even generate an error. Next we have the PNA template with the red player with its lonely Bion there. And it managed to actually generate one blue catalyst, which is it's nice. It's a nice little bonus. Those are our only two microorganisms. Our macroorganisms are going to brush off and ignore that Darwin roll. Now we're going to move into purchases. The blue player will go first. It has a yellow and a blue that it could purchase with in the reds tableau. There's a red and a green here. That's not going to help it. And thanks to the red player only having a yellow and blue, it cannot make a purchase because it can't use two of the same because they're not there for chemoselectivity. There's nothing to purchase, so it does not get to purchase anything, and that's really good news for us. Next, we have red. It has a yellow and a green organ left that it needs. Definitely going to purchase the yellow. Ooh, get in there. And it looks like we're going to miss it by just one. But red still has a biont down here as an endosymbiont in the flatworm. And we'll make a purchase of blue to gain another organ for the flatworm. Incubation cocoon. That will move us to the green player. Unfortunately, the green player cannot make any purchase with this blue. If it was green, we'd be right there. We'd be able to do it, but we can't. Green will make a purchase for itself and spend one green to gain another organ, a gizzard, and also unfortunately since we do not have another round we're only one cube, one organ away from having the flatworms go terrestrial. That's it. Our purchases are complete. Everything is done. We have run out of time. We have no more segments of time to deal with. Almost made it to terrestrial organisms. But I think my mistake of not counting those system chromosomes for several rounds put me here to where I probably would have had the organs available to do it. That's okay. I definitely won't forget to do that again. This will conclude our solitaire run-through. 
of BIOS Genesis. I actually generated a Marine win for the Solitaire game because Marine win victory conditions means if you end the game with Bionce of both colors in a Marine macroorganism, that means either two Marine macroorganisms, one with each of the Bion colors in it, or a single macroorganism with an endosymbiont. And we actually have both here. We got red and green here and red and green here. So I'm going to give myself a double marine win. And it would be likewise if you wanted to get a terrestrial win in the solitaire game. Same thing. You need to have both of your color bionts either in separate terrestrial organisms or together in one. But I'm going to go ahead and add up my victory points according to the rule book here and it says each cube on your organisms bacteria parasites macroorganisms and their mutation are worth one victory point each okay your system chromosomes are each a victory point so since we're playing all together as a solitaire game as a team we'll add them all up we have we have nine cubes. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, and ten system. So that'll account for all our cubes. Each biont of your color in an organism earns you a victory point, even if it's in another. So if we have four of our biont's, oh, five of our biont's in an organism. The yellow one was malaria at one time. Each trophy, cards or placards of extinct organisms, the photocarboxylation just off the top of the frame where you can't see it is our sole trophy so that'll give us a victory point. Dominance victory point. Each macroorganism is worth six or 12 victory points extra if it occupies the highest trophic level relative to other macroorganisms in the ecosystem. We have two macroorganisms and of course one of them is in a higher trophic level. It says however any macroorganism that has multiple bionts splits the trophic dominance victory points it achieved equally among each player with at least one bionic present. So we split that six and six which is still going to give us 12 and I'm going to award that to myself even though it's solitaire because I managed to get two organisms and have one be dominant over the other in the trophic level. And now I'm going to do math and if I added everything correctly, I come up with a 49 point or 49 victory points and what I'm calling a double marine solitaire victory. If you think I tallied that up incorrectly, please let me know what it is so I can post an annotation with the correct victory point level. I did read that out of the rule book. There may be some changes on the living rules. I did not look at them while tallying my victory points. Thank you for joining me for this playthrough of BIOS Genesis. This game was a tough one. This one wore me out. This game required a lot of brain power. This one really was a difficult one to try and play through without making many mistakes and I still made a lot of mistakes and everyone was really nice in the way they pointed them out and turned it into a real uh, community effort to try and make the best video playthrough and have the correct information in it at the same time and I really really appreciate everybody's input and continuing input that I'm sure I'm going to get in the future. I hope the playthrough will entice you to give the game a try. Also, don't be afraid of it. You can see making mistakes just becomes part of the game. I made a bunch of mistakes and 
you know what, you learn from them. It's no big deal. Don't let a whole bunch of rules and the fact that you may make a bunch of errors along the way discourage you from playing this or any other game. Again, thank you for joining me, and I hope to see you again in my next video.